Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Wells. I'm a developer programs engineer on the Google Analytics De uh, developer relations team, excuse me. Um, and I'm here to talk today uh, in this episode of Off the Charts um, all about exception tracking um, and why you guys should be doing it. And in particular, I'm going to show you five reasons why I think uh, you should be measuring exceptions today. Um, so just to take a step back and maybe get some context on the problem uh, as a whole. Um, so all apps obviously uh, crash at some point, right? There's no perfectly stable app. Um, so all of our apps are going to have useful crash data that's um, going somewhere. I, and what I'm going to try to show you is that crashes are going to provide an opportunity for us to improve our app experience for end users. And by measuring these crashes, um, we can make better products. Uh, we can make more money, obviously. Um, so it's a win-win for developers uh, and users. So before we get started talking about the five reasons I think you should be doing um, exception measurement, I just wanted to cover some exception measurement basics. Um, so what is exception measurement? Uh, maybe you've heard that term before, but you've never done it. Um, basically, what I'm talking about is measuring um, fatal crashes and non-fatal exceptions uh, in native mobile apps. And in particular, in Google Analytics, this is really about seeing crashes and exceptions in context uh, with the rest of your app usage um, and e-commerce or in-app payments data. There's a lot of solutions out there to do um, different kinds of crash measurement. And if you're an Android developer, for example, uh, you may already be getting crash and A&R data uh, in the Google Play Developer Console. Um, so what really sets analy uh, excuse me, analytics apart is that you're going to be able to see the crash data uh, in context with all of the other app usage data, um, as well as your e-commerce data. And this is actually really powerful. Um, and I'll show you in a little bit what, what you can do uh, when both of those things are combined. But one of the examples is you can see the effect of a crash, for example, on uh, e-commerce payments or in-app payments. So there's some prerequisites uh, for getting started with doing um, crash and exception measurement that I just wanted to go over. Uh, luckily, there's really only two. Um, number one is that you should download the GA SDK for Android or iOS. Um, and you can do that at our developer site, which is at developers.google.com slash analytics. And then number two is just follow the Getting Started Guide, if you haven't already. Um, that's going to get the SDK implemented in your app. Um, it's going to get some of the basic measurement features in place. And actually, if you complete that Getting Started Guide, um, you'll already have implemented uh, automatic crash measurement, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. So you'll uh, have a leg up, and you'll um, already know how easy it is to implement this stuff. So uh, one more bit of sort of uh, uh, context before we jump into it. Um, exceptions in Google, Google Analytics. Um, they're comprised of two collection fields. So this is the stuff that you're actually sending to GA. So the first field is a description field, um, and it's a string. And it's a, as you might guess, it's a description of the exception. Um, there's a 100 character limit on this field. Um, so you can't uh, take out an entire stack trace, dump it in, and send it to GA. Um, and I'll talk about later, actually, why uh, you won't want to do that uh, for, for some other reasons. Uh, it's really meant to be a pretty short description of the exception that occurred. Um, the second field that you send when you measure an exception is this is fatal field. And this is a Boolean and just indicates whether or not the exception was fatal, i.e., was it a crash, or whether it was uh, non fatal, and so we're just going to call it an exception. Um, as far as your reporting options go, so once you've got your data, um, we have a brand new, uh, well, it was new uh, a little while ago. New if you haven't used our uh, app reporting, um, but it's a crashes and exceptions report. And this is really going to be the go-to uh, for most people to get data on um, their crashes and exceptions um, and see how that's trending by uh, release version, et cetera. And that's in the engagement section on the left-hand nav. Um, and then additionally, we have the exception description dimension and the crashes and exceptions metrics, which you can use um, pretty much however you want in custom reports, uh, in dashboards, uh, and as custom segments. Um, so if you want to go beyond what's in the crashes and exception report, and I'll show you some examples of that today, um, you can definitely do that using these dimensions and metrics. Just one note, for those people using the core reporting API, um, these dimensions and metrics are not yet available, um, but they will be coming soon. 
So with that said, let's jump into uh, the meat of this. Um, so five reasons you should be measuring exceptions today uh, using Google Mobile App Analytics. So the first reason I'm going to talk about is uh, automated crash reporting. Basically, uh, you should be measuring this data because it is dead simple uh, to send it to GA. Number two, um, you want to know how stability is trending across your releases. So are new releases introducing more bugs than they're resolving, um, or vice versa? This is a really nice thing to be able to know um, so that your team can check on it as you uh, put out additional releases. Um, three, so you can find out what crashes are actually costing you. And costs aren't always uh, in-app revenue or in-app payments, although uh, very often they are. Um, but that could also be things like uh, user engagement metrics. You might see those suffer, and you might consider that to be a cost. So it's interesting to know, um, you know the relative cost of each exception to figure out what impact it's having on your user experience. This can also help you prioritize uh, fixing certain issues as well. Uh, number four is going to be see which devices are least stable. So especially in the Android world, um, there's a, a ton of devices out there that your app may be running on. And it's really difficult to be able to test on all of them uh, before you release. So being able to see um, by device easily which, uh, where the crashes are occurring can give you an idea for, you know, if some device is crashing a ton or your app's crashing a ton on that device, it might be something you want to look into testing before you do your next release. Um, so that can be really helpful as well. And number five, um, you can get insight into trends of caught exceptions as well. Um, so this is, I'm going to kind of be going back and forth between caught and uncaught exceptions. Um, uncaught exceptions are what I would call crashes, um, where there's no handling code, so the app basically just crashes. Um, but you're going to have a lot of caught exceptions in your app as well. And some of these may be really valuable to track um, and measure as well. And you can do that using the SDKs. So um, let's jump right into the very first reason, um, automated crash reporting. So basically, um, it is, and I'm maybe exaggerating a little bit, but it's, it's dead simple to get this implemented, um, whether or not you're using EasyTracker. Uh, for Android, or you're using an advanced implementation on Android, um, or if you're using iOS. So let me show you how easy this is. So with Easy Tracker, all you need to do is add just this one line um, to your XML file. That's usually analytics.xml, but it could be anywhere. Um, that just basically says, turn on uh, report uncaught exceptions. And that's all you need to do. It's just one line. Um, it goes with the other uh, configuration settings that you have in your uh, Analytics XML file or wherever you store them. Um, and that's pretty much it. If you did nothing else um, and just released your app, um, at least you would get um, data back that shows you uh, crashes, a description of the crash. Um, and you'd be able to do most of the things that I'm going to mention today, where you can segment it by uh, device and um, by app version, et cetera. So super easy. One line, uh, and you're done. For Easy Tracker. Um, but even without Easy Tracker, if you have an advanced um, implementation, it's actually still pretty simple. Um, in the SDK, we provide a class called Exception Reporter. Um, and you basically would just take that, you create a new instance of Exception Reporter, and you hand it um, a couple different arguments. Um, one of which I wanted to point out here was that you actually give it the current default uncaught exception handler. And then you set that exception reporter to be your new default uncaught exception handler. So what's going to happen is that um, when there's an uncaught exception, um, our exception reporter, the GA exception reporter, is now going to pick that up. We're going to track an exception. We're going to dispatch it. And then we're going to hand it over to um, whatever the default exception tracker was before. Um, so if you haven't done anything crazy or custom, that's basically going to mean that the crash data is going to get sent to Google Play if need be. Um, and then the app's going to exit just as normal. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, even without Easy Tracker, it's still pretty simple. And most of the examples I'm going to give uh, today are for Android. Um, but I did want to show a quick example for iOS, um, just to show you that just like with Easy Tracker, it's actually just a one line, uh, one line of code to get automatic crash tracking uh, up and running. Um, so you can see here, um, you just add this line um, to your app delegate. And it's very similar to the, uh, the XML file uh, in Android, or very similar to that. You just uh, turn it on to send uncaught exceptions. 
Um, so in terms of what's actually sent out by uh, this automatic exception reporting, um, GA is going to send the exception type, uh, the method name, the class name, um, and the thread name where we can automatically. Um, we don't, well, I'll get to that in a second. Um, additionally, all these auto automatically reported crashes are going to be considered fatal because these are all crashes that were um, picked up by an uncaught exception handler. So we consider that to be fatal. And this is the point I wanted to get to. We, we don't really recommend sending the stack trace reason or the trying to stuff a whole bunch of information from the stack trace into the um, description field. Uh, number one, because the description field is actually quite small. It's only 100 characters. Um, but number two, maybe more importantly, um, that stack trace may contain some sensitive personal information or personally identifiable information. Uh, and it is a, a uh, big no-no to send that kind of data to GA. So our solution sends exception type, method name, class name, and thread name. Um, and if you're doing this on your own, um, I would recommend that you send similar fields. Um, so that's automatic exception tracking. So no matter how you've implemented our SDKs, it's either going to be one line of code or maybe two lines of code tops. And you don't have to worry about it from then on. It's going to collect data on all of these crashes and send it back to uh, your GA account, where you can then segment it by all these great dimensions uh, that we'll talk about in a bit. So in sum, uh, you should do it because it is very easy. Um, and everybody should be getting this data. Um, but let, let's talk a little bit about what you can do with the data once you have it. So the second reason um, is that you want to know how stability is trending across your releases. So I mentioned it earlier, but basically the idea here is that you want to know if a new release is actually um, producing a whole bunch more crashes, if it's less stable than a prior release, or vice versa. If you had a, a bunch of crashes in one release and you put out a bunch of fixes in your next, uh, you want to see that number come down. And it's very useful to be able to track progress against that. So what we want to see um, in GA is crashes and exceptions by app version. And this is something that we make really easy. Um, actually, the default view of the crashes and exceptions report is going to show you a breakdown of um, crashes and exceptions uh, as metrics and then app version as the dimension. So we can see in this example here, um, there's an app. Uh, this version 117 has a ton of crashes and exceptions. And uh, our app version 2 um, has far fewer, only 91 compared to about 7,000. So it could be that version 2 just came out, so maybe you got to give it more time. But it looks like we're making some pretty good progress here in terms of uh, making a more stable experience in this version 2. Now you can take this a little bit further. Um, you can take the same report and segment it by platform or OS version um, as the secondary dimension. And this gives you even more granular insight into where um, crashes are coming from uh, in each of your releases. So, in this example, you can see here we've got we still got app version on the left side as the as the primary dimension, um, and it's showing one one seven. But then we've added this operating system and version second dimension, and so now we can see okay within my app version one one seven within that release, show me the breakdown of crashes and exceptions across these different versions of Android in this case. Um, and so here we see that actually most of the crashes and exceptions were coming from this Android four, uh, some version of Android four. Uh, there's some for Android two. Uh, gingerbread, but mostly it's in four. So it gives you an idea of, hey, you know, maybe this is a place we can focus on. Maybe there's something specific that's going on here that we can take a look at and try to fix. Um, you can use other dimensions there as well. Operating system and version was just uh, the one I thought was most interesting. But um, if you had, for example, Android uh, and iOS, and you might want to just break down app version by platform, you can just do that as well. Uh, and one last thing you can do with this uh, that I think is pretty cool. Um, you can take uh, the app version dimension and use it in a custom segment so that you can compare crashes over time between two, uh, or really two or more releases. So in this example, what I've done here, I've created a segment, uh, actually two segments. Um, one of them, they both use the app version uh, field name. And then the values of those fields are going to be the releases that I'm interested in. So I have a segment for version 114 and version 117. I've applied them both uh, to the crashes and exceptions report. And then I can see over time in this nice graph um, what the trends are for each version. So for example, 
Uh, in this case, I may have pushed some kind of bug fix um, uh, sometime in the middle of January. And you can see both versions actually come down, so that's great. Um, but version 117 is actually still uh, showing a bunch of crashes over time, so it might be that I want to look in there uh, more closely. Um, third reason, uh, and I think this one's really cool uh, and highlights one of the real strengths of tracking exceptions with GA, um, which is that you can kind of get a sense of what crashes might be costing you, both in terms of uh, e-commerce revenue or um, user metrics. So let me show you how you might do this. I'll just jump right into it. So first thing you do to set this up, you're going to create a custom segment using the exception description field. And then the value of that field is going to be whatever exception you're interested in seeing uh, the cost of, whatever the cost is to you. Then you're going to create a second exception. And you can call it something like baseline. And that exception is going to exclude um, all sessions that have that crash description, the one that you used in the first segment. So now you have one segment that says, give me all sessions um, in which this particular crash occurred, and then another segment that says, show me all seg uh, sessions in which that crash didn't occur. And that's your baseline. Now you can apply these segments, both these segments at the same time, to pretty much you know, almost any report uh, in GA. But it's particularly interesting to see it applied to um, a goals or an e-commerce report to see how a crash might be affecting outcomes. Um, that might be able to help you determine um, how you should be prioritizing fixing that bug over maybe other bugs. Um, you can also use it to see a difference, the impact on user uh, engagement metrics. So in this case, this example down here, you can see that I've got um, average time on screen and screens per session, two pretty common engagement metrics. And I've got my, um, my baseline sessions there. So 11 seconds is the average time on screen. Um, but for those users who run into this profile picker crash, so it's, I don't know, it's some sort of crash when you're trying to pick your profile, um, some user data. Uh, their average time on screen is actually much lower. It's about three seconds. And in terms of screens per session, um, our baseline is about five. Um, but in sessions where we hit this crash, um, that drops down to about 1.3. Um, so that's a pretty big deal. So if, if a user is normally using the app and getting into it uh, about five screens deep, and then all of a sudden this crash is causing those sessions to be just one screen only, um, that's a pretty serious uh, problem that you might want to look into further and prioritize it to get it resolved. Uh, I'm going to keep rolling on here. Um, so number four, um, this is particularly important, I think, for Android developers. But this is seeing which devices are least stable. Um, so you can't always test uh, on all devices before you launch. Um, and there's, I know there's a lot of solutions out there that offer um, testing solutions like that, where you can um, you can actually maybe get close to testing on all devices. Um, but for those of us who aren't doing that, um, you kind of have a couple devices maybe that you're working on uh, in development. And you try to test as many as you can, but eventually you have to release it. Um, and in the Android world, that means your app could get uh, used on any number of applications, uh, sorry, any number of devices uh, that you may or may not have had time to test. Um, so one of the useful things you can do with this exception data, uh, now that you're collecting it, is that you can create a custom report uh, to see crashes and exceptions broken down by device model. So here's an example of what that looks like. Um, so I've used the mobile device marketing name as the dimension here. Um, I just think that's an, it's a nice one because it kind of gives me back the device names that I know, like Galaxy S3, rather than like a model number or something like that. Um, and then you can see crashes and exceptions per device. So in this case, obviously, there's a lot of crashes on Galaxy S3. That may be um, just because more people are using the S3 to, act, to uh, use your app. Um, but it may be something you want to take a look into further. Or for example, on a Desire uh, or on a Galaxy Note 2, that may be a device you haven't tested at all. Um, you might want to drill in there to see what kinds of crashes are happening there. Maybe it's a device you want to target for future testing. Um, before you launch the next version. Yep, so and just quick, to create a custom report, um, I use mobile device marketing name as the dimension, crashes and exceptions as metrics, and then you get this pretty clean report. So the last thing I wanted to talk about um, was monitoring trends in caught exceptions as well. Um, so a lot of what I've been talking about is measuring crashes. So these are uncaught exceptions. But there's a lot of cases in your app um, 
where you're expecting that exceptions might be thrown and you're catching them and handling them uh, gracefully in a way that the app does not uh, just boot the user back out to the home screen as it would in a crash. So there's a lot of value actually in measuring some of these. Um, so I wanted to talk about this one as well. So again, yeah, caught exceptions are, probably won't crash your app, but they're still valuable to measure. Um, and I use the word selectively here because um, I'll show you in a second I, what I think might be one valuable use case. There's a lot of cases where you probably don't want to measure uh, caught exceptions, and it's actually kind of a waste to uh, send GA that much data uh, and have to use the radio on the device that much to send us the data. So let me show you an example. Um, just a small code snippet here. Suppose this is from a game. Um, and what's happening here is that um, I've got a list of high scores that are stored in the cloud um, that when a user finishes you know, a game on, in my app, I want to be able to request those high scores and show them to the user. Now, I'm expecting that this might throw an exception because for some reason, uh, the uh, high scores might not be available, um, the server might not be reachable, uh, et cetera. So I've, I've set this up in try and catch blocks. And in my catch block, um, I've added um, just two lines here. Uh, you could actually shorten it down to one. But basically, I just get a reference to my tracker. And in this example, I'm using Easy Tracker. And then from that tracker, I'm going to send an exception. That basically says, OK, I tried to get the high scores. Something went wrong. So I'm going to send this exception to GA. Um, and I've just included a, a simple message like high scores are unavailable and a, a false Boolean value indicating that this wasn't um, fatal. And then you go on from there with whatever code you need. So on the reporting side, uh, what that might look like is that you get uh, something like this. This is sort of a similar example. I pulled it uh, from a, a real live account, uh, one of ours, um, where a uh, caught exception um, kept coming up when the uh, server was failing to respond. So basically, users were asking for data. They were sitting there waiting for it, uh, and the data was not being returned. Um, so we wanted to make sure we caught that exception. And this is what it would look like uh, in your reports. Um, two tips on this. Um, if the request for data, if it's, if it's a common one that requires the user to wait for a long time, this is also a case where you might want to track uh, that latency using our user timings feature. That's probably a whole different GDL, but I just wanted to mention it. In cases like this, where the user's sitting there waiting for data to come back from the cloud, and they're actually just sitting there, it's not asynchronous, they're just, you know, they're, they're, their experience is stuck until they get it, that's a good use case for user timings as well. Um, another tip, uh, you should probably only measure caught exceptions when they're having a big impact on user behavior. So in this example, I've been saying over and over, um, the user's sitting there waiting for something to happen, right? That's an important thing to measure because it directly impacts the user experience. Um, so you want to know how many times that exception is being caught. Uh, in other cases, you're probably you know, catching all kinds of exceptions all over the app um, for a bunch of different reasons. But if they're not directly impacting the experience of the user, I wouldn't recommend tracking them. Um, you're going to end up sending us a ton of data um, and using much more of the radio to send us that data, uh, which is bad for battery life anyways. And when you get to your reports, it's not entirely uh, clear what that kind of data would be useful for. So I would recommend just stick to like the, the big uh, caught exemptions that are really going to affect uh, the user experience. So just to recap uh, the five things that I just kind of rushed through, um, number one is automated crash reporting. This is super easy to set up. So everyone can get this data in just one or two lines of code. Um, just grab the SDK, implement it, and you're pretty much good to go. You don't have to do anything else. If you don't want to send any other data, that's fine. You can just send us crashes. Um, and it's really simple to set that up. So number two, uh, the second reason, um, knowing how stability is trending across your releases. So we looked at ways in which you can segment your uh, exceptions and crash data um, by app version, app platform, et cetera. You can track progress against total number of crashes. Uh, and thereby stability uh, over time as you keep putting out new releases. Um, three, find out what crashes are costing you. Um, and again, I think this one's really cool. You can create segments um, for particular crashes and compare them to sessions in which that crash didn't occur to get a sense of what the impact is on um, user engagement metrics, but also on your e-commerce and in-app payments as well. Uh, number four, um, seeing which devices are least stable. 
And this one, again, was really important for Android users who um, have to deal with a wide variety of devices, devices, and they won't always be able to test on all of them. Um, so this is pretty cool as well. And number five, um, because you can get insight into trends of caught exceptions. And these, these caught exceptions can represent um, moments when there's a big impact on user behavior. So it can be really useful to grab this. And the example I used was uh, if you're requesting data from the cloud and a user's sitting there waiting for that, um, and there's an exception that's thrown because the server's not available, um, that's something that's really valuable to measure and hopefully minimize in future releases. Cool, so that's it uh, for me. Um, Five reasons you should be tracking uh, exceptions. Uh, if you have questions, um, feel free to hit the developer site. It's developers.google.com slash analytics. Um, we've got developer guides for iOS and Android um, to help you get started with those really quickly. Um, and you can also catch me on Google+. Uh, and my name is Andrew Wales. Um, thanks, guys, for coming to this off-the-chart session. And uh, hopefully, I'll see you again soon. <laughs>